Accompanied by her family, Adelaide Wilson returns to the beachfront home where she grew up as a child. Haunted by a traumatic experience from her past, Adelaide's worst fears soon come true when four masked strangers descend upon her house, forcing the Wilsons into a fight for survival. Things become even more terrifying when each stranger takes off their mask, appearing to be a different member of Adelaide's own family. Now, no movie is perfect, and this one is no different, so let's discuss some of the pros and cons of Us. Some pros? The style. Jordan Peele may have started off as half of the comedy duo behind Key and Peele, but he is now one of the most revered horror directors out there, and only on his second full-length feature film. I think part of that has to do with Peele's distinct visual style. His unique take on the horror aesthetic is just instantly recognizable. Get Out was infused with more comedic elements, which makes sense given Peele's comedy background, but it was to the point in which some people actively argue that Get Out is more of a comedy slash satire than it is an actual horror movie. In response, Peele made sure Us felt more like a pure horror film. It has some home invasion elements, it has some slasher elements, it has some supernatural elements, and it has some thriller elements and Peele's distinct visual style really aids in fusing the horror genres together in a unique way. The acting. Winston Duke, better known as M'Baku from Black Panther fame, does a fabulous job in this movie. I've only ever seen him portray a tough and rugged warrior with a loud personality in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but he gets to play the role of just a regular guy in Us. He is just a regular Joe Schmo, and while he gets to portray a protective father, he also acts as the film's comedic relief, in a way that feels natural and organic to the story, and not at the expense of his character, like the old and tired stupid dad trope. The kids in this movie also do an excellent job. Kids can get very annoying in movies very fast, but Shahadi Wright Joseph and Evan Alex do a solid job of holding their own. But of course, this movie belongs to Lupita Nyong'o, as she delivers one of the best performances of the year so far. She portrays the main character in the movie, Adelaide, and she does a great job of showcasing the wide range of emotions that someone would go through after experiencing such a traumatic event. She is fearful, she is vengeful, she is protective of her family, and she is steadfast in her convictions. Though I have some issues with her character's motivations, I won't deny that Nyong'o did a great job of elevating the material she was given. And even more impressive is the fact that each of these actors had to perform a dual role. Not only were they portraying individual members of a family, but they were portraying the evil versions of that exact same family as well. Everyone does a fantastic job of portraying their evil counterpart. The acting, especially with the dual performances, works extraordinarily well in this movie. The music. Now, I may not have loved Michael Abel's score for us, but I will admit that it served the story quite well. It had a proper, unsettling vibe to it, which helped create an unnerving atmosphere in the overall film. And of course, I loved the horror rendition of the song I Got Five on it, which was first introduced in the film's trailer. It's just a great take on the song, and honestly, it's probably going to be the version of the song that I hear in my head whenever I think about the tune. The Concepts and Themes Much like Get Out, Us is surely going to spawn plenty of discussion for years to come. Film critics will talk about the technical craft, YouTubers will create countless video essays debating over what the film is actually about, clickbait channels or websites will claim to know the hidden meaning behind every frame in the film, college students will write thesis essays on the importance of the film, and so on. The point I'm trying to make is, Us is a movie with a lot to say. All of the concepts and themes used in this movie, whether we're even aware about them at this point since the only two that I could catch on my first viewing were the ideas of duality and perception of character, are explored quite well in this narrative. Lots of elements in the movie are open to interpretation, so I'm certain that others will uncover different themes and ideas based on their own individual worldviews. There is plenty to uncover, examine, and analyze in this movie. I only wish that more of the film was left open to interpretation. Because, to move into some cons, the film is really bogged down by its third act. 
I won't spoil anything, but I will say that the movie does give away the mystery of where these evil doppelgangers come from. And to be honest, I found the reveal to be quite uninteresting. I almost wish their existence was left unexplained, leaving the audience with ambiguous questions to debate over. But instead, we are given exposition that tells us exactly what is going on, and the result is unexciting. It isn't as fun to debate over who or what these evil doppelgangers represent, because the filmmakers practically tell us by explaining their history. The only thing left to debate over is the tethered, the place in which these doppelgangers come from. But I have less interest in talking about what the tethered represents, and more in discussing where the fuck this place actually physically exists. Because it seems to be a location on Earth, since the doppelgangers can just walk out and reveal themselves whenever they please. So why didn't anyone ever accidentally run into this place or discover it? And why did the doppelgangers wait to expose themselves? They were aware that their normal human counterparts existed, right? But how? And why? We learned that the doppelgangers are capable of having a wider range of emotions, so why do most of them want to blindly kill off their counterparts? Do they ever kill each other? Do they have a functioning society in the tethered? What do they eat? By giving us too much information on the tethered and its inhabitants, it makes the audience ask all the wrong questions. I would have preferred if these evil doppelgangers were just forces of nature that didn't have any personal motivations. Much like the White Walkers in Game of Thrones. If you explain their history or give them any motivation, it just diminishes their presence as an unstoppable force. And that idea is definitely ruined in the film's final twist. I might get a lot of hate for saying this, but I'm going to compare Jordan Peele to M. Night Shyamalan. When Shyamalan first came out with back-to-back -back hits like The Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, and Signs, many people were praising his storytelling abilities, his technical craft, and his unique visual style. Shit, Newsweek even championed him as the next Spielberg. But we all know Shyamalan today as the robot chicken parody of himself who likes to shout, What a twist! Jordan Peele only has two films under his belt, and people want to declare the man as a genius or the next Alfred Hitchcock. I just don't want all of this praise to inflate Peele's ego. I don't want to see him become so overconfident in his work that he'll release and defend shit movies like Lady in the Water or The Happening. But by the final reveal in the movie, I was already getting that vibe. I literally couldn't stop thinking, what a twist, while watching the reveal unfold. And finally, the scale. Peel seems to have had a lot of grandiose ideas in mind for this narrative. And I understand that mentality. He's coming off of Get Out, which was hailed as one of the best movies of 2017 for having such relevant social commentary and hidden themes found beneath its surface. I don't think Peel was wrong for wanting to incorporate some grand ideas. I just think some of these ideas get in the way of a simpler and more compelling story here. I think Peel just bit off a little bit more than he could chew, and that is evident in the narrative, as this small little home invasion movie evolves into an event that changes the course of the entire world. There's no denying that Peel's ideas are unique and interesting. But reeling in some of those concepts I mentioned earlier, and holding back on the need to fill every frame with a hidden meaning, might just have made for a more satisfying movie. Because while I admire Jordan Peele's attempt to make original, unique, and socially relevant horror movies that transcend the genre, I can't help but feel underwhelmed by all of the hype surrounding his efforts. Because I would probably give us 2 and 3 quarters out of 5 stars. I'm not the first person to say this, but Jordan Peele's movies feel more akin to episodes of The Twilight Zone, which is probably what he's going for since he helped relaunch the Twilight Zone series. Well, with that being said, I can't help but wonder if I would have enjoyed his movies more if they were condensed into smaller scaled, episodic time slots. I guess I'll find out if Peele directs an episode of Twilight Zone himself. Anyways, thanks for watching.